So you mentioned this word Finsta, as in Finstagram. So what does that mean again? Yeah, so <laughs> I'll admit, I watched a TikTok video that was on Instagram. <laughs> it was TikTok. And, um, All right. <laughs> It was my one for the day. Okay. It was just ha- chance that it was TikTok, <laughs> and I came across okay. it. And one of the people in the comments was like, oh, this is so-and-so. And the girl replied, is like, oh, that's my Finsta. My my real one is, uh, then she gave the, her real one. And I'm like, my, my Finsta? <laughs> what, what is that? So I Google it, and apparently it means fake Instagram and or fake insta or or whatever and it means basically they have people usually have two accounts like they're one that they use for family which is a lot more tailored and doctored and they only show the best pictures and they also have like a maybe uh, not the best pictures but like the cleanest most wholesome pictures yeah exactly like they're not going to be showing like you know the party they went to last night but then they have the 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 that's the finsta but then they have like the rinsta which is a terrible word (laughs) But that means like real Insta, and that means that they that's where they post like all the stuff that they whatever they want to basically. You know, I wanted to bring this up specifically for what you just said. I have no problem with Finsta, but Rinsta is the worst word I've ever heard. (laughs) (laughs) It's so bad. That's such a bad word. I don't I don't know why. It just sounds gross in my mouth. I don't ever want to say that. It 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 looks weird too. Yeah, it does. Like I don't know. Ugh, it just looks really bad. Yeah, I came across the word too. I, I was I was actually going through TikTok today, and I uh, I noticed that word. You know, okay, you know I've, how I've been really bad at social media presence and stuff for this podcast. My our social media presence on TikTok is actually really good because I accidentally signed in once with the digital symposium Instagram on TikTok, and I never <laughs> oh, took God. it off. So we. I don't know. Technically, people have seen. I'm sure someone at this point has seen the the term digital symposium on TikTok. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll, if you're, a, <laughs> I don't. Know, I don't know if I want to be associated with yeah. TikTok. If anyone um, listening is from TikTok, please let us know, and I'll. I don't know. I'll. I'll write you a, a card or something. Because <laughs> send you a yeah. Because that would be so incredible. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I don't know. It. It just sounded weird. I think I had something else to say on that topic, but I can't think of it right now. Instagram, something else. Oh yeah, I, I've just noticed. Um, that's really come more into the mainstream since Facebook kind of died, and because of that, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, Facebook is like reinventing themselves a lot. They're getting into hardware. Well, yeah, no, fa- yeah, Facebook is all over the place yeah. now. It's like they got so big, but their core, their core, uh, what is it, product? Mm-hmm is kind of dying now it's 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 in its later stages of life i definitely yeah. think so like it'll still it'll be around for a very long time I, but they're like obviously the company's huge and they need to like diversify and make yeah. sure they keep like the actual company profitable yeah. you know it's probably still more than profitable right now but they're definitely like you know they bought oculus they, they have bought their, instagram too yeah so and instagram as well which i think for the most part i mean they've done an all right job with I still can't agree with how I can't sort my stupid feed by chronological instead of algorithmic. I like. I just want to say, I don't. I, I feel like I've said this on the podcast Probably. before, but what the algorithm is supposedly how it it tailors the content to how it best thinks you want to see it. Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense because I want to see it chronologically and it doesn't know that and it doesn't give it to me like that. I'd love to play devil's advocate here, but I totally agree with you. I, I don't understand. I get I, – I think what they're trying to do – here's – okay, here's what I think they're trying to do. I think it's a – what's the term? It's like a predatory um, UX that they that they have installed because I think what – I think the, the main point is like, listen, we want people to stay on here longer – so we can take a little bit of content that their friends post and we can make it seem like a lot of content by sticking in old pictures like you know haphazardly in the middle and if we do that then we can fit advertisements in there too so it takes them longer to scroll to the stuff they like that's why i think they did it which honestly makes sense if you're a heartless businessman but for a consumer it's terrible yeah i mean and i can understand too that some people have they literally follow hundreds of people yeah. and to go through everything chronologically 
um, you would miss like you would miss some of the stuff your friends mm-hmm. did or your family did in between all the posts from those other uh, those other people pages yeah. that just post pictures of you know like all handbags only or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'd unless you were going through everything, you'd miss out on a lot of posts. And so you know, I can understand where it'd be important to push like, oh, engagement picture. We got engaged to the top yeah. because that's obviously more imp- important than the picture of like a Lamborghini or something. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, for my use case, at least, I want the option to, for chronological because I don't follow that many people. Oh, absolutely. So it just makes sense. And so, but it doesn't matter anyway because I haven't opened Instagram in uh, forever. So, have you seen that new product that Facebook's been trying to market? Is it the? Is it the? Like I saw a picture of it, right? The hardware. Something by Facebook. What's its name? By face product by Facebook. It's like a. It's like a big TV, or like a big camera that you um that you just have in your house and it's on a swivel so you can talk to it and it like follows you as you talk to it what's Ew. it called what? you haven't seen this thing i saw a picture but i didn't want to read it uh, the article that i saw because i'm like i'm not going to support headlines like that <laughs> no, wait, wait. I'll, I'll find it portal first, there it is it's called portal portal by facebook. facebook portal i think it's portal by facebook or something portal from facebook is its name so it's this like really it's like a tablet strapped to a to a thing like it really does look like it was taped on or glued on i think it's screwed in but honestly it doesn't matter it's a tablet where i think it's just i think it's just a facetime camera it's maybe the video shared experiences is it really it's seen. just is it so is it like a smart home device but it not just audio, but visual as well. Oh no! It has "Hey Portal" as its wake-up word. That's not good. Um, <laughs> hey Portal. Yeah, most surprising thing. I'm trying to see. All- no, sorry, but for for me, considering Portal is one of my favorite games of all time, I, I don't know if I can do that. <sighs> you gotta bring it up every time, don't you? Facebook. I don't have to bring it up every time, but <laughs> it's literally the word is right there, so I can't help but not. <laughs> It, yeah. Like, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know. I, I just knew you're going to mention it. It's, it's, int- I think it's just a video chat thing, which. Only- oh, hang on. Hang on. It says it has Alexa built in. Yeah. Yeah. They made a deal with. That's interesting. Yeah. Which makes, which makes no sense as to why you'd say, hey, portal to turn it on instead of just Alexa. But- well, I think because it has functionality on top of what Alexa provides. Mm-hmm. So Alexa is just like a certain. It's just there for what Alexa does, and then they built way okay. more on top of that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if these things start popping up in homes more. Like they, I you know for 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 young families and grandparents, it makes perfect sense to always have like a TV that you can turn. Like you know, the grandparents can call and say, "Can I just spend some time just watching the kids for a bit?" And you can just turn it on in the playroom or something. Um, like I could see, like every grandmother in the world would jump at the chance. To have something like that, but beyond grandmothers, though, I'm not really sure who the uh, who the audience is. Yeah, like, and it was something something I love too is the I'm get I'm on their page now here. They have a whole section, obviously, about privacy, but they uh, have a button on it apparently to turn the camera and microphone off, and they they make a point to say this mode physically disconnects the camera and microphone, and they cannot be turned on without pressing the button again. <laughs> Because they know people are going to bring that up. Well, it's up Facebook, it's yeah. Facebook. Because yeah. Facebook has a really bad habit of, of doing that. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's... It, I don't know. It's there. I don't know if you can even see it, but the, the pictures they're using to advertise this thing, like just like talking, um, like one of them is like a guy making spaghetti as he talks to people, which makes... Yeah, I'm, yeah. I don't, you know, I've made spaghetti before, but I don't ever want to talk to anyone while I'm making spaghetti. At least not through, not through a portal device or something. Yeah, I mean, I, I for me personally, I'm not the the friends I have, the people I know, and the type of person I am, I, isn't gonna want to do video calls. Yeah, and especially not video calls that casually. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you know, for grandmothers, I'm sure this is gonna be great. Um, oh yeah, but uh, beyond that, yeah, I really don't well, see it too much. I don't know. That's pretty two hundred dollars. It, you mm. know, what it makes sense for. They're solving a problem. I don't think anyone really cares about. 
because this does a great job at replacing the landline. Now, I don't know if anyone actually cares to replace their landline instead of just get rid of it completely, because I think most people are just getting rid of their landline completely now. But it does technically replace it in a really elegant way. In a sense, so I, I can see where you're coming I from, just, but I think people are more more consider the landline replacement to be at the phone because it still has a, a yeah know, phone no number. absolutely like I think I think the phone is obviously better in every way, but if you're looking for an elegant solution to the landline specifically, like you know it's still going to be a landline, but it has to be the next evolution. This is the next evolution of a landline. But that's kind of just all it is. So I don't know. I'm curious to see if it takes off. Like maybe I'm maybe there's more people than just grandmothers and grandpas that want this. Or maybe I'm really highly underestimating the baby boomer population. Maybe they'll just eat this up and buy every product that's that's out there for it. Well I guess yeah. I don't know. Because <laughs> here I'm thinking here I'm thinking about work and I'm like, I don't know, there's still a lot of people I'd say like half the people still have flip phones. But then I realize, wait. That's not quite the baby. Those are that's the generation that gave birth to the baby boomers. <laughs> yeah, baby boomers are still getting up there. They're they're pretty good with technology now too. Like the baby boomers are not. They're they're friendly yeah, to it. Yeah, they would get something like that. Oh well. Um, okay, I want to mention another product really quick. So, have you heard of? Is it that one with the weird name? Ernan. Yeah. Okay. Ernan. 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 So, it used to go by another name. I don't know what it's called now. But this popped up because I've, I've been trying to get through, um, I think, the next season of The Good Place right now. What show did I just finish, by the way? I forgot to put it in the podcast, but we, I should talk about it. You mentioned it was, oh, House of Cards. Never mind. House of Cards is on here later on. Um, anyways, so the, it, there's a commercial for Ernan that pops up when I'm using these services. And Ernan is... <sighs> okay, so... so they basically lend you money, but not in the way you think. So so what you do is you'll go to work in the day, and then you'll come home, and then every month your company will send you a paycheck. What Earnin does is it says, and, and this is going to sound horrible when I first say it, and honestly, it still makes my, my stomach wrench a little bit. They say, no, no, no. When um, they talk to your company and they say, hey, you should send the paycheck to us and then we will divvy out daily payments to your employee. And here's the weird why, <laughs> because because that way you can see, that way you can see your daily pay, like you can see how much you get instant, mm, okay. yeah, instant gratification. It's about instant gratification. Like you feel happier, yeah. I think. But anyways, um, and in exchange for this, you give them nothing. They completely, and I've checked the website. I don't understand this, but I've seen it everywhere on their website. They only work on donations to keep this service going. So I don't. How, okay. How long has it been around? I don't know. Did you see? I, I haven't seen. I'm assuming though, I'm assuming though probably what you're getting at. Like maybe they're doing this to like get it kickstart, like, give, you know, give it a bit of a jump start because this is such a hor- like a huge thing for people to do. See. Yeah, because it sounds like it's become big all of a sudden, and so it—I don't know how long it's been around. That's what I want to know. Nap, life hacker, Wired, yeah, a lot of articles um, written about you. Partnerships, facts. I, I actually really want to look more into this, but there's a lot that we'd have to like. Yeah, like I'd have to go just like look them up on like we you know some government. We website. don't have enough time for this tonight. What I'll do is I'll I'll underline it really quick so that we can come back to this later. In a later podcast yeah anyways um there's just just something i do want to point, say though is i understand what you're saying about instant gratification and all that but i think there's an important another important key element here is a lot of people like you never really think about how much you actually get paid in a single day's wage mm-hmm. and i think it's it might be good to for a time to put stuff in something into perspective mm-hmm. if you're not thinking about it yeah um already because it's like, you know, you can you can go to work and be like, oh, well, you know, I got a hundred dollars today. Um, and this would be like a way of actually showing that as opposed to just being like, well, I put, I worked a bunch these past two weeks and then I got a bunch of money. Yeah, it feels like it feels like nothing. And it obviously could go both ways. Like you, the other flip side of this is, you know, what if 
what if you get that hundred bucks at the end of every day and then go out drinking every night that week and then you have nothing um, exactly about the yeah. end of that week i mean you know there, if, if you're going to be drinking every night anyway yeah i don't think that's going to stop you know yeah. when you get your money is going to stop you <laughs> that's fair but but yeah it's it's interesting i'm i was curious because i kind of had the same feeling that you did like maybe it would be more i mean we have a really big problem especially in the united states with with anxiety like we have horrible anxiety in the u.s working you know really ridiculous like 40 hours a week is kind of ridiculous and a little bit archaic when you stop to think about it and um and the amount of uh the amount of stress that the the average person goes through in the US just based on really ridiculous things like you know when am i going to get my car fixed when am i going to make this payment when am i going to fill out this paper it, um it's just crazy and being able to alleviate that by or it, at least partially by saying like you know you went to work and you got something like it was just a little barter exchange that you did and you see it instead of having it all in the abstract where you you won't actually feel anything till the end of the month and then that feels totally disassociated from your actual work it uh it, it i don't know maybe it would really help some people so yeah it really looks like they're playing to a certain type of people here because i went back to the, on their blog and i went to the first the first uh, post which was made in january in 2017 and it's called there's a money problem in america and one of the points they make in like the second paragraph is they say when an employer says i'm gonna pay you in two weeks everyone think that's okay mm -hmm. um but then when um your bank says oh you spent more money that's in than is in your account people say uh that's um no one says i have money just check my employer's bank account they're just holding it hostage for like you know two weeks or whatever you know yeah it's that's that's a really good point i wonder if i don't that's a this i like this company the more i think about it and that kind of bothers me because that that makes complete sense i think this is this may just it's valid it's a valid argument to say that there is a problem with the way that we pay workers and treat workers and the problem only exists because at one point it was the 1800s and we just didn't have the tools that we have now you know, actually, yeah, the more I think about it, the more I realize there's no reason not to, yep. especially because everyone uses electronic payments now. Yeah, we're just in an arcade. Something system. that's interesting here is they say the annoying payroll delay is costing people over $50 billion a year in fees. Mm -hmm. I don't know what fees they're talking about. Maybe fees that come with um, dealing with companies who use the two-week delay. Something like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe, they, maybe the fees they charge. But... I mean, the more I think about it, the more reasonable it seems. Right, Jake. You want to know what my uh, what my delay is? You're not going to believe this. I'm going to say three weeks. Two months. I have a two month delay on all my paychecks. It was the most frustrating thing to get used to. Why? I don't know. That makes no sense. I don't know. Nobody in the school knows. It's just bureaucracy, I guess. Like, there's no is other. It, is it just this? The city? Is it? It's, county wide is it statewide um, i'm so confused so i work for the county so maybe it's just a problem with the county it's i i know i've heard this problem with with other education workers i haven't heard it from like firemen and police officers before but then again i haven't asked very many firemen and police officers i don't know i just know it's ridiculous <laughs> And I've met people, in fact, I met someone um, a week or two ago where I, I was asking them about their work and they're like, well, I was employed as a, as a janitor at a high school a while ago, but when I started, I needed money, you know, a month from then to pay for rent and they didn't pay me. And I asked them where my <laughs> money is because I need to pay rent. And they're like, oh, it'll come in the next month or two. Don't worry about it. Like, you know, I'm far away in a month. It's, it's the most ridiculous thing. That's that's just completely absurd. Crazy. So I started thinking about this. And I was like, "Oh, that'd be real good. It'd be a real nice thing to have for for my particular situation." But, anyways, I, I'm glad I mentioned that. We'll we'll talk about it a bit more later. Yeah, I'll make it a bit. There's a, there's too. Definitely. Uh, that'll I'll have to think about that one. Yeah, we got to keep our eye on it. That's a that's a real interesting one. Okay, I don't know how interested you are in my Red Dead Two. So, okay, we've we've talked a little bit about the game. I've I've played it at your house. Okay, so I don't think there's much that needs to be said, at least between us two, mm -hmm. except for the fact I want to know why you said you've only put something around four hours into it when you keep saying it's such a good game. 
<sighs> okay. It's been a little while since I've touched it, which I know still doesn't sound good. I'll keep in mind though, it's been a really busy week for me. I'm in the middle of a kitchen remodel right now. I sent you pictures of it. Um Yeah. yeah. So I, I more soon. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't had a ton of time to spend with it. Emily's been playing it like crazy. Whenever she gets the chance, she is on that game and playing it. It's 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 frustrating. It it kind of fights with you a little bit. It's like a it's like a really it's like a really it's like a piece of steak that's really tasty, but it's also really tough. So you've kind of got to muscle through it, but you don't really mind the muscling through. You got to work a little too hard for the good flavor. Mm, yeah, kind of. So so it's a great game. Um it's, you know, it's it's made I'll give a you know, a little my, the two cents really quick. It's, you know, it's it's built by it's built by Rockstar, which is known for Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. Those are its two main IPs. Um the, you know, it's an open world game. You you play as what's his name? And why am I forgetting this? Arthur Morgan. You're Arthur. playing Arthur Morgan in Dutch's gang. I think there's a bigger name for your gang, but you're just you're in this gang and everything. And if throughout the first part of the game, which is the only I think I've played I think five or six hours now, you're you're on the run from the law. And so you you're in this big open world and there's a ton of stuff to do. And the way you know, the real unique thing about this game and the way, well, first of all, the, the most, the most unique thing about it so far is that this game is the most, um, it is, it is the biggest project in video game history that's ever been undertaken. It was an eight year project with 2000 people working on it. That's a lot. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge, it was a massive project. And that that really shows in the game, but not necessarily in all of the best ways. So so the way this really comes out, you really feel it, is that the world feels very, very alive. Everything you do feels like you are living someone else's life. Um, I think, you know, you played a little bit of it. You kind of saw, like, you walk around camp. You kind of, when you're in camp, you're more relaxed. So you're not running everywhere. You're not allowed to run in camp. You only get to kind of, you know, stiffly kind of walk from one place to another. There's a bed. You can get, a, you know, a quick shave if you feel you need that. Um, you're very relaxed. And then once you leave camp, you can do with a little bit more. But you have to be careful with your horse because, you know, if your horse doesn't trust you, it's not going to really know how you want it to move as you pull the reins. And so it might accidentally run into a tree or something or close to one or it might go cl near to a cliff even if you tell it not to um, until you get a bigger relationship. And so there's these little things that they honestly, they feel really, really good for the first like three hours of the game. And they don't feel bad after that. But what happens is you start realizing that in order to do, you know, you get into the game, you say, okay, I just got home from work. I want to do one quest. In order to do that quest, you have to turn on the game. And the game always starts, it did this in Grand Theft Auto V too. I don't know if you remember, but like, you know, if you, if you jumped into a character really quick, they would be in the middle of something. So they'd be like leaning against a building or they'd be like asleep and they'd get out of bed or, you know, they'd be, yeah, yeah. something would be happening in their life. So you have to break whatever action he's doing and, and walk away from that area. Um, you need to make sure that you have enough food if you want like your stamina really good and everything's done. You have to go to your horse, brush your horse a little bit because if they like you, then that's a better option. And then, um, you know, untie the reins, get on your horse. I think, are you kind of getting where I'm going with this? Like there's Yeah, it sounds more like a chore. It's not and it's all the all the well it's almost like all these little things you think are cool. Yeah. You realize they almost get in the way of the fun unless you're really into it and they're it's... you actually genuinely really enjoy them. So the best the best thing about this game is that it's so it's so immersive. They did such a good job with the immersion that you really don't mind any of these things. It feels good to do all of this stuff and to care about Arthur, your character, because you really start loving him and all of his and you know all of his little quirks and stuff and all the little, you know, nuances that they kind of added to his personality. Like I think I told you like one of my favorite things is you know, you, you can get a, you can get a room in a hotel for a night and you'll walk upstairs, you know, really slow. Cause you're, you're tired. And then you'll like sit on the bed and you can look at the mirror and then he'll start just blasting himself in the mirror. Just being like, look at this fat, ugly old man. Who the hell would ever love this? And like, like he'll just, it's now it's more, it's more funny in the game. Like I know I'm making it seem sad. I'll just be like, ah, I'm Arthur. Yeah. You're going to die alone, old and ugly and alone. And like, he just, he'll just keep going <laughs> on about it. Um, anyways, he, 
it feels so good, but it also takes forever to do one thing. So in order to do a single quest, you have you've got to sit down for a big chunk of time because I guess there is a fast travel system, but four or five hours in, I still haven't unlocked it. And um, and so I'm still kind of just riding everywhere, which again, feels good, but you're riding, you know, you maybe you get a bounty, maybe you're going for a bounty mission and stuff, you get the bounty, you know, he fights you a little bit, you struggle, there's a tussle, but you tie him up and put him on the back of your horse. But then on the way back, you know, maybe a deer runs out in front of you and you accidentally hit it, everything. So you have to, you know, you have to get back on your horse, make sure your horse is okay, feed it some stuff if you need to get its health back up so it has normal stamina and you keep going. And then um, there's a whole bunch of little things that happen. One of the ones that happened to Emily on the way back from something is a man on the side of the road. He started screaming because um, he was working near some lumberjacks who were cutting down some trees, and a tree fell on his leg. And so she had to get together with all of the guys and help lift the lift the tree off of the guy um, as he was crying in order to save him. So it's a really great game, but it takes so long to do anything that you you've got to be in a real specific mindset for it. So I don't. It, it's great. I'm glad that I'll have it for a long time to enjoy. But um, yeah, maybe maybe one time you'll have a, a much more like maybe a a bit of a chunk of time. Yeah, to just really sit down and enjoy it, but not probably not right now. It's I yeah, I, and I like doing it when I have yeah a nice bit of chunk of time to just go in and relax and just listen to the story because really, what Rockstar games are good at is giving story. And I'm sure you know this and everything. The gunplay is never great in Rockstar games. The the mini games are okay. They're not great, but the story's always really like you're. It's so good at making you feel like you're in the world and that's the reason you want to spend more time in them um, i'm sick of talking about red dead 2 <sighs> yeah but no it, it, that's, that's something you might you mentioned <laughs> sorry it, just, it, it felt like takes. one long sentence i'm sorry keep going we can keep talking about it <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine um the one of the things I've, I've definitely noticed recently is i want i'm i'm buying a lot of more smaller games like mm-hmm. shorter games just because i know a lot of the bigger games I'm never going to complete yeah. or I might complete years from now. Like mm-hmm. I still haven't gotten around to beating the Witcher three the first time. <laughs> like I want to play it again. I want to go back to, you know, the beginning of the game and replay it since it's been a couple years since I've even seen it. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm here thinking as much as I enjoy almost every aspect of that game, I've already put, over a, like a hundred hours into it oh, gosh. it's one of my most like second most played games on steam and it yeah. just but it just takes so much time even if i'm really immersed in the world and i love the characters and i'm loving the story it just takes so much time and so i've been buying you know short games like um uh, like there's one a story about my uncle which is basically it's just around a short just one concept which is having a um what's it called like a, a grapple hook oh cool and so you can swing from thing to thing and you and that's that's basically it it's just a super simple game and but i'm i'm, I'm finding myself leaning more towards these types of games just because i know i can complete them i can probably actually yeah. get all the achievements and it's gotten it's just a more co- like a complete experience it's gotten worse in the last couple of years too. well i mean it, i think it just gets worse with time because that's kind of that's the struggle with um with open world games because they just you just get more and more and more of them and you're gonna fall behind because you're going to miss one and then that's another one to add to your catalog and backlog and everything and then when the new one comes out you're like oh i should play that but i still have six others to play and even if you buy that new one you know you're only going to get halfway through before you want to try another one that has a really cool gimmick that you might like it's just and and not to mention you know then you get bad ones like mafia 3 where it's just a a grind yeah you know i really like Mafia too i was bummed about that yeah so i don't know open world games they're interesting yeah everywhere now so yeah they're everywhere and they seem like they're getting away from from i don't know older open world games felt tighter maybe that's just because they had smaller budgets well um, i think i think it's more so because it's kind of like the whole the zombie genre of movies mm -hmm. how zombies became so prevalent in mainstream yeah, it's a lot harder to do something original with zombies nowadays since everyone's done everything with to do with zombies. Yeah, so they're trying to. And yeah, you know, you could say that some of the first movies to do stuff with zombies were actually decent. Mm-hmm. 
just because they were actually innovating. Yeah. If, if you can kind of understand what I'm saying. Just, mm-hmm. you know, the people who, some of the first good open world games, you know, like yeah. they were the ones who came up with the ideas that are standard now. Jake, you've got to play, I, I really, really want to play the original Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time with you. I think like that it, one day one day all right <laughs> like uh, since you you know you keep saying i should i should play it and it's one of those things it's just oh yeah you know it's a game i know i should play so but i'll i mean i say say that about so many games so i uh, well it's, uh, there's a couple of reasons why and i think this will help a little bit um just to help not not freak you out about it or anything i don't want you to have like a big emotional experience because it's not that kind of game it's not like a, oh my gosh, I see why this is so amazing now. It's um it's it's a great game to play with other people. Like it's kind of built for you to have friends around and talk about it constantly. So I would love to play it with you in like small bursts. And this is a game where I didn't play it until I think five years ago. Um and I was still blown away by it. Like I, I really do feel like it still holds up, and I was amazed that it still hold up held up so well. But it's just a game about like a little kid. There's not many NPCs, not much talking. It's just going around fields and kind of exploring and solving puzzles. So it just it kind of it it just feels like it's up your alley. You love puzzle games. Um, you you love like a little cute things where you're like throwing chickens everywhere and stuff. Like you can be <laughs> ridiculous, and it wants you to be ridiculous. Like that's the. I don't know if you remember. Like there's a there's an old joke in video game history where um like if you hit a chicken a whole bunch of times every chicken in the world will freak out and attack you at the same time and murder you for being so mean to chickens that came from <laughs> that came from this game um because it it wants to play with you and pal around with you so it wants you to try to break the game and do something ridiculous that it can rebuke you for it and smack you and i don't know it's it's great <laughs> so anyways we gotta yeah. try it at some point we'll do it for a game of thrones tonight we'll try it out and see what you think yeah, it's, it's, it's well, like I said, it's just one of those things. It's one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, I just there's so many games I know I should get around to games I that I own, and I'm like, yeah, maybe one day. Yeah. Okay. Anything else about Red Dead? I don't think so. Oh, I will say this. I need to mention it because just to just keep everyone on track. Um, I was able to play Red Dead because my other PS4. I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous podcast, but it was slowly dying on me, so I broke down and I got a PlayStation 4 Pro. And because we're running out of time already, um, I won't I won't say too much on it. I'll just say it really doesn't add a big improvement if you only have a 1080p TV. What I do love about it is that it is it is quiet as a mouse. I can't hear it at all. It's so quiet, which I love. But uh, well, that's like comparing <laughs> that's like comparing a jet engine to a like a laptop. That's fair. <laughs> it's it's quieter than your computer though. Like it's it's just oh most no, definitely of the time. Con- yeah, like yeah. I don't even even, even like a PlayStation 3 or something it's mm-hmm. just whisper quiet. Yeah, like I had a what game was I playing? Oh yeah, I had Red Dead in there. I had Red Dead in there. I didn't hear I was trying to listen for it. Like I stopped all the noise. I turned off noise on my TV and I just listened and I couldn't hear it. It's just it it's doing a really really good job. So I I really like what they did with the system to optimize it for that. It's it's great because, you know, the PlayStation 4 is an underpowered PC, right? The PlayStation 4 Pro is slightly overpowered for PlayStation 4 stuff, so it's able to just run like like buttery smooth. Yeah, um, yeah, it'll run a lot, nice. just a lot better. Yeah, in general. Okay, makes sense. Oh, <sighs> all right, Black Wake. So, I mean, I don't have much to say on that. I wanted to mention. Uh, it I, I think I, I think we got funny. the full experience just from the one, no, two games he played. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it was first off, games, wasn't it? it was, but well, I was. Uh, I, don't, you... I don't think I don't think we were ready to be. Um, I don't think we were into the game enough. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's a game on Steam called Black Wake, which is a multiplayer pirate ship game in the same genre of uh, what's the big one out for on Microsoft right now? Oh, the I, name? I can't even remember. I'll, uh, I'll look up my Micro... black black flag or something. I don't know. Microsoft pirate game. It's the one Sea of Thieves. That's the one. I'm That's of. right, Sea of Thieves. Yeah, so it's it's trying to it's like a low budget Sea of Thieves, if you will, because and I honestly can't imagine Sea of Thieves is much different at all from this game. Um, it, the whole idea is you have a you have a ship and there's several you know types of ship, 
and you have a captain which is elected from the players you actually elect which one you want to be uh, the captain and they can actually make a they can make a speech if they want on why they should be the captain um and then once they do the rest of you are all first mates which are basically all the same and you have to go around doing different things if there's a if there's a you know a leak in the ship you have to go repair the leak if there's water in the ship from the leak you've got to pump it out if you know if there's no more cannons up top you have to go grab a box of cannons and carry those up to the top uh, cannonballs and yeah and gunpowder and all that cannonballs i'm sorry yeah yeah and but it's, it's just tense <laughs> yeah it's just it's just the thing that got me though is it i i don't know it's it's so close to being good Mm -hmm. but i don't i didn't see any longevity in it for me other than the social aspect of it of there being a captain giving orders i understand that but then also the people were just people were just into it they were really Um, into it well we seem like we we jumped into the meta way late we we, like, we did we were <laughs> but at the same time i think with how quickly we picked it up yeah and the fact that as there was i don't think there was much else to learn it was we, awesome. i mean the first game by the end of the first game i was already thinking I, there's nothing else to do like, yeah I, i've already i've literally <laughs> already done everything i've i've pumped the the water out i've repaired holes i've shot cannons and reloaded them all and everything and (laughs) i loved hearing i loved hearing everyone like yell a whole bunch of ship terms as they're as we're going oh yeah i didn't port side port side starboard starboard (laughs) it was awesome you you gotta swing around this island and yeah yeah, it was it was interesting they did a really good job but yeah it's 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 bare bones which makes sense i mean it's a small game it's like an off-budget sea of thieves and sea of thieves is pretty bare bones as well so it, it yeah, this is this is even more so than that. Um, but it was really really fun for a little while. It's worth checking out just to see how ridiculous those guys are because they get really into this game about being a pirate. Um, uh, I think I'm gonna skip down really quick since we're speaking of pirate games. I've been meaning to talk about this one with you for a while. Okay, okay. so. The return, return of the Obra I Obra- always want to say Deem for it's some reason. Din, actually. I, it took me a long time to get that. The Obra Din. But I like saying Obra Dean. So this is made by, I forgot the name of the guy. He's the guy that made Papers, Please. Papers, Please, Creator. Um, Lucas Pope, that's his name. And in a very Lucas Popey fashion, if you've played... Th- um, papers please you'll know this and everything papers please was a game about you being um you work for the soviet union as a as a crossing guard not a crossing guard a uh, a border security guard in like the most boring way possible but they tell a really rich story through that in kind of the same way you're working for an insurance company in the Ob- in the return of the Oberden. And you have a very particular or curious case that pops up on your desk the company is told hey listen um, from a couple of years ago, you're it, by the way, it's like 1875 or something. It's in the 1800s. And they say, you know, a couple of years ago, there was this boat that went missing and it just washed up on shore and we don't know how it got there. And there's a man who really wants you to look into this and run the insurance for it. And so, and so that's kind of where the mystery starts and everything. So you're put on the Island and you're given by this mysterious man who wants you to, you know, investigate. He gives you a small compass and it's a magic compass. So the entire game, you have WASD to move, and then you have your mouse to look around. The only other thing that you can do in the game is click this compass on and off. I think there's a zoom function, but besides the zoom, you can just click this compass on and off. And if you click it in the proper areas, you'll see events. Uh, Well, actually, I'm sorry. It's not just proper areas. It's It's all the corpses. So you walk around this boat, and if you see a bone or bones, like a whole skeleton or something, and you click it, you can see the last, I think, 30 seconds of when they died. And you can start putting things together. So your job on the ship is to take the whole manifest from the ship, like every single person that's on it, and figure out who, who each person is in relation to these corpses and everything. Which is harder than you might think, because it'd be really convenient if, like... I don't know. When people die, they don't usually like exclaim their name from the top of their lungs. 
So you can't just get it from looking at them. Like it's it's really it's a really cool thing. So, so, so you're so you're telling me that the uh, the bad guy wasn't there monologuing to them right before they died? No, yeah. <laughs> I heard one guy talking about it. It's like, oh no, I, Seamus, you know, the second son of Percival, who's right next to me and everything, <laughs> are leaving this world. <laughs> if only like it's it, it's it would be great if that happened, but nobody dies like that, unfortunately. So you have to so it's great. So you're listening to or you're you're uncovering this mystery that starts getting more and I don't think this is a spoiler so I'll say a little bit and it's that the the game is um it gets into the fantasy of of being at, at sea and everything it gets into a lot of the a lot of the folklore that you have about pirate ships and all of that stuff and it plays with a lot of those ideas and it actually introduces you to them very fairly quickly and so you have this this big story with all of these little things like there's there's marriages that are under pressure um, while they're on this ship and everything. There's a there's actually a princess and her guards that are just trying to get home. I think they're I think she's they're Korean or Chinese. No, they're from a I think they're they're from some minor Asian country, and they're uh they're trying to get home as like fast as they possibly can. But then they get arrested while they're on the ship. And then there's a murder that happens on the ship. Like you're just – you're trying to figure out all these things and you're seeing this plot unfold. But you're seeing it unfold from the end back to the beginning in order to figure out the story. So it's 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 really, really cool. Um, Basically what you're saying is just go play the game. Yeah, it's, it's great for – well, okay. I need to say one more thing before I give my recommendation. It's – so the whole game is done in a in a Commodore 64 pointillist style, which is awesome. It is so good. Um, Lucas Pope spent a long time working in, I think he did it in Unity, but he like he built his own pseudo engine to uh to use the graphics in this game because it's not. I don't know. You've got to Jake. Can you look up a picture of what it looks like? I think I'll add a picture as the. I, 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 I've I've seen pictures. Yeah, it, you've it's seen it before. Interesting. Yeah. It's a really cool, um, like if you like retro games, you'll love the way this looks. Um, anyways, okay, my really quick recommendation for it though, it's if you like if you like games like Sudoku, this feels very similar to Sudoku. If you like um, if you like puzzle games and mystery games, this is absolutely fantastic. My only problem with it is that you can only really play it once because once you know the mystery, you kind of that's that's kind of it. So it's, which is again why I can't, I can't really say much on it, unfortunately. Yeah, but that's, that's pretty much the pitfall of any story-driven game. That's fair. Yeah, once you know it. Yeah. Yeah. So, it. well, first off, it doesn't feel like it's been that long since the last podcast i say i know i feel like we say this every time because it is a uh, we usually can go a little too long between episodes but it feels like this was just yesterday that we were playing black ops 4 yeah Um, you know what i should mention before you do that though the reason we're recording this right now by the way for everyone listening i i kind of begged jake to to record this one with me tonight um i accidentally forgot that fallout 76 was coming out tomorrow and Fallout 76, because Bethesda screwed up somehow, uh, was released today. So I found myself at a GameStop trying to get a Christmas present for someone. And Oops. as yeah, and as I was as I was doing that, they were like, "Oh, hey, it looks like you have Fallout 76 on here. It just released. Do you want it?" And I said, "Okay." So now <laughs> oh, I have no. Fallout 76 that's installed, and I'm about to play. And I can't toss anything more on this podcast docket li- or doc list. So we so got to really try and get through it. I'm trying to thin it out so that we can start adding to it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing right now. We're just thinning, thinning what are, what we have to talk about. So I'm sorry. So Black Ops 4. Jake and I played Black Ops 4 several weeks ago now um, and had thoughts on it. Jake, what did you think about Black Ops 4? I want my money back. That's basically that's basically <laughs> all I want. <laughs> yeah, I got my money back. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. it. It's it's not a bad game. It's just Black Ops. It's it's not a, it's not like it's not a bad game necessarily <laughs> because it has it's a triple A title. Yeah, but I think it's just it falls short 
and being a fun game. Yeah, it's you know this is um, it. I think this project had or this game had the same problem that Red Dead did, and I didn't. I forgot to mention this when I was talking about Red Dead. You remember how I said it had a giant team working on it? Yeah. I think that Red Dead would have been a lot better if they'd had a good director at the top saying, hey, listen, this is great. Maybe we should thin some of this out. I know you guys have a ton of work in here. Maybe we should cut a little bit and trim it and make it feel like a tighter experience, even though we have so much. And I feel like Black Ops could have really um, – that, that could have really benefited from it too. Everything from like the very first time you turn it on, you're just blasted with a – I don't know. The user interface looks really weird. And like not dated, but it feels like like a like the same UI that they kept tacking stuff onto over time. And so now it's just this really gaudy, cre- crazy thing that that you start up the game with. Yeah, um, it, that that was definitely one of the fir- well. Obviously, it is the first thing you notice when you load any game is just the menu. Yeah, is it never felt cohesive? No, not at all. <laughs> um, I know, I know. There's one thing I was um I was reading. Apparently, story for the. Since there's no single player, the story you could get for the people from multiplayer, like all the characters you play, was yeah. buried behind several lit, lit menus deep. And it was in like this tiny little text box that scrolled automatically and you couldn't move yourself. Yeah. So it was, it, it, even though it had all this extra space around it for one, you could, where you could easily fit all the text without having to scroll. But then also to get to another character, you had to go back several menus and then go down several layers again. And, that I think that's just a good example of one of the ways it just feel everything feels bad. Not to mention, mm-hmm. it's so busy. It I don't I don't think it's a good design in terms of user experience either because it never felt like I was and anything was intuitive in terms of d- mm-hmm. design. Being able to recognize the stuff that I needed to see, it felt like I was always searching too hard for what I needed to see. I don't know if you've noticed this yet. Did you notice that Team Deathmatch is like kind of buried in the multiplayer as well? I didn't because I was um I was in a party and so someone else was doing the matchmaking. Okay. It's like the third or fourth thing on like it's not at the top like hey, TDM, like the thing that everyone just normally does that everyone's familiar with. Nope, it's like way down, not at the bottom but like in the middle you know, almost as an afterthought kind of thing. Yeah. Like well, we're going to um, add where, this what position. Or I don't, sorry, I don't what was remember. above it, do you know? It was uh there were several modes that they had. One of them was a it was like it was like a steal the bacon mode. Um that's the best way I can describe it. The idea was I think there's like a there's a stash of money in the middle of the map. And I don't remember what it's called, but you like go to the you have to you both go and you're you know, you're obviously fighting each other and stuff and you've gotta grab it, take it back to your camp and then wait there for like twenty seconds or something. Hmm. Um which I think is just steal the bacon. Which yeah, kinda of like capture name. the flag too. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just, uh, I don't know there's, there's these modes that they were trying out, but again, even those modes felt like, Hey, these are these new things. Do you like them? Like they don't, they, they're not really sure about <laughs> anything in the game. They just kind of threw it all together. Yeah. Uh, anyways, we trashed the menu enough. what do you think about, um, I guess we'll start with blackout. what do you think of black? Actually, you know what? I think we have the least to say on the multiplayer. what do you think of the multiplayer? Well, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't going to go over over every single version I like zombies and blackout differently. I think so, it, I think it was just more so okay. it wasn't it, it's hard because I I, I have a, well, actually I was thinking about it. I have a lot I have a lot to say. But <laughs> just just because I want to make sure there's a distinction that you and I were playing you know, Modern Warfare 2 and stuff back in high school and back so, back when we were the 12-year-olds playing Call of Duty. So um, do you see how I put on here Black Ops 4 review and comparison? Yeah. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about this because this we kind of threw this particular episode together pretty quick. Um, what I think would be the best option, because I was thinking about this a lot, I was like, oh, like this game really, it seems fine, but if you compare it to anything else, it seems kind of bad. Yeah. Which is why I threw the comparison. So anyways, you are talking about... um. Uh, what Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two? I think. Yeah, because that's the that's when I, I played the most of. Yeah, and I don't know if since um that was when the series was really starting to get re- really huge, mm-hmm. and uh, and it might also because be because of rose tinted goggles or something. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so we look back even with the bat unbalanced multiplayer as look back at it as better than noob it tubing. actually was. You're just forgetting the noob tubing, aren't you? No, I'm remembering the noob tubing. <laughs> That's just it, though. Is because, like uh, and I remember the marathon lightweight and commando pro and all that yeah. and all the the cheap ways you could play the game. But to me, that almost sounds more fun than whatever I was doing in multiplayer of Black Ops Four. Yep, and I think one. Yeah, of, I, I think one of the. Well, I think one of the reasons is it's just it was simpler. You just had you weren't overwhelmed by options. You didn't have classes and then you didn't also choose which operator, which determined your, your perks and your special ability and stuff. Like it felt like I was filling out a a D and D character sheet or something from just playing multiplayer. Like, okay, yeah, I want him to have enough dexterity and I like his, I like his special ability over there, but I don't like that guys. And it just, I'm like, I I just want to, I just want to hop into a game and shoot some guns and I want it to be fun. But then that also brings me to the fact that compared to the the older Call of Duty games that I played, because I I stopped at Modern Warfare 3 and play Black Ops 2 or Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3 or Modern Warfare 2, for, or sorry, World War 2 for that, that matter. And then coming in at Black Ops 4, I realized, holy cow, they about doubled the speed of everything. Your running yeah, speed, your jumping speed, like you are always manic. in the action. It's, and that is yeah it's like you're on cocaine it's crazy but not in the good way not in like the twitch shooter um quake like change, you quake, just, you quake or the map unreal and... en- or sorry not unreal engine unreal tournament like not in the not in the good way because it's those games are designed differently they're designed mm-hmm. to be like that but in call of duty it didn't start out like that it was never designed like that in the beginning and so they're like okay well we have this call of duty experience but we want it to be something else, but we can't change everything too much. And so now it just seems like this really weird blend that doesn't, that leaves a bad taste in the mouth to me. Yeah. I think the big difference between those two games, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I think the only, the big thing I can think of though, is that in the Twitch shooters, um, you know, in time splitters and uh, I don't know why that's the one I'm thinking of right now. (laughs) Um, You know, doom and a, what's what's the big one what am i unreal tournament like those those games um there's a lot of lateral movement like you're moving side to side a lot and you're bouncing yeah because you have have stuff like rocket jumps and you have you have um, yeah like the lifts the elevators the yeah you're using all dimensions whereas in this game you're really only moving forwards and back there's not you can slide i guess but that's just side to side though and that's not that's not up and down and that's yeah, you're only you're only really using like two dimensions. You're only just going like forward, back, left, and right a little bit and everything. But it's it's it it's a game that originally I think was built, and I think this is exactly where you're getting at everything. You know, you're supposed to peek corners, you're supposed to hide a little bit and stuff, get a really good you know spot and kind of you know camp it out a little bit while moving. Um, not not twitch shooter stuff, but it I don't I don't know. It just it seems like they're just splitting the difference with it. Um, I, it feels honestly like the game, it, like they made the game out of fear. Um, it be, like, because you can see so many things from other games kind of tossed into it and stuff like unreal tournaments coming back. And, um, and, and so you, you know, there's, there's these like super hyper fast movements in it and everything. And the other game with really fairly fast movements, at least is, uh, is overwatch. And just like Overwatch, you've got champions in the game that you have to pick one of, and they have a unique ability, even though they all shoot and stuff. And so you've got to pick one of those guys that kind of goes around it and stuff. And it, it just feels like there's this burden of, of you know, trying to be every single game because they really desperately need to make their their uh, their stock happy or their stockbrokers happy. Stockbrokers? Is that the right For thing? shareholders? I'm tired. Shareholders, thank you. It, I, I, it just seems like the whole game was built out of fear instead of trying to make something really good. They're just like, okay, we got to be every game. That's what we need to do with this money that we have. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one of the problems when your game becomes so huge and you have, and there's certain expectations that the company needs to meet with that game yeah. is yet to appeal, try and appeal to as wide an audience as possible. Uh-huh. But then when I think about it, I'm like, man, that, that menu didn't feel like it would be easy for anyone new or old to the series to get used to 
Yep. Like you spend enough it time in anything, bad. it's going to become really familiar and easy to navigate. But coming into it, no. That's exactly how I felt about zombies. The zombies mode is... I don't know. I got a lot of kickback from the people we were playing with and everything just because they've been playing other zombie modes. And I think you've played a couple others too. Yeah. I only played... And I had a really big problem with this because I only played World at War, <laughs> um, which was the first zombies mode. And that zombies mode was fairly bare bones because it was, you know, it was incredibly bare in, bones. Yeah. You're in a room and you could fire at zombies and you could unlock other rooms on the side. And by the way, there's these other guns that you can unlock by paying for them with points. That was the only thing. And then I jump into this one and maybe this is just because I'm getting old, but, um, I, you know, I jump into this one and stuff and I'm tossed in the map and there's things to kill me, but there's there. First of all, there's a lot of story being told over the whole thing. That was the first thing that jumped out on me. There's like nonstop dialogue while you're in that zombies mode. I had to turn the whole thing off and make sure there was no dialogue volume whatsoever because they wouldn't shut up the whole time. <laughs> it felt like I, they never took a breath and they just kept giving me more and more story on why I'm in this Roman Coliseum fighting these zombies with modern day guns and why time travels a thing and stuff. And then I don't know. And then I have a special ability of like Thor's hammer that I can smash down to to help me out more and then i can and then i can super upgrade my guns while i'm upgrading them and then there's other i don't know it was just weird and then there was like five perks that i have that i can unlock there's just a ton to oh there's just a lot i'm getting a headache thinking about it <laughs> i mean but, um, it's not like we it, you know you could one could argue well what video games can't be complicated or something but this this isn't like old, dwarf fortress yeah. complicated or by any stretch of it's the imagination not, no. but I mean, <laughs> to, to me, it, to me, I wasn't quite as surprised because I had played a, I had also, you know, played the zombies in world, black, the first black ops. And I think, I, I think I had bought the DLC of one of the, one of the black ops DLC. Mm -hmm. And that was when I think they, you know, they were slowly, it was a gradual process is what I'm trying to say is they, it, okay. it's not like they just zombies became like that overnight but obviously yeah. just like how i was saying slowly but surely they like they had to keep trying to trying air quotes here to do something yeah. new every game while keeping it like like um mm -hmm. a call of duty game and they kind of had to do the same with zombies they had to make it feel like feel like zombies but they had to obviously they couldn't just do another you're in a room like the for the, the very original zombies map there was two rooms yeah. and an upstairs room so they had to do more but it, it okay know. so i i think my big issue with that particular thing is that it all of the things they added like together when i say them out loud they it doesn't sound super complicated that i don't think the issue is that it was overly complicated necessarily i think the issue was that it didn't feel like okay so the you know there was like five perks that you could hit with like one two three four and five that's something that comes from dota that's a that's a dota and world of warcraft mechanic to have those perks set to those hot keys and everything um the idea of using like odin's hammer as a as an extra weapon that's an overwatch thing like that's that's something that that game would do it just felt like i don't it it felt weird and wonky because they're they're pulling these different ideas from different things to you know make something new i get that but i i just don't think it meshed very well together but again i guess people are enjoying it so i can't i can't say too much bad stuff on it like people are it's getting really really good reviews and like genuine like i've heard genuine reviews from people saying i thoroughly enjoy this game and i want to play it more not a you know not not an ign they paid us a lot of money to say this is a good review yeah. kind of review um, so yeah, yeah com complicated know. feelings. General consensus is, uh, I think I'll pass. Yeah. Well, I mean, you didn't, you bought it, but <laughs> only because you're bad at controlling your impulses. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm, I'm fairly good at knowing like when I can come back from those impulses, which I did, but, um, you're just, you're just too bad at lying to people to get your money back. That's the real issue here.
<laughs> He's not even gonna say anything on it. No, I'm just I'm just thinking because okay. I had originally typed like, um, I'm gonna be honest. This game was awful, and I did not like it. Could I get my money back? <laughs> but then I deleted all that, and then I typed in the other reason. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking, I'm here thinking, because in the email they said they met, had a line about, oh, you know, we don't we don't give uh money, we don't give refunds based on uh, change of heart or something. And here I'm thinking, oh, they 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 called your they called your BS. Well, yeah, if, exactly. And then also I'm thinking, well, I had typed in something like that. Did they like? Do they have a behind the scenes call where they're like updating the form or something, or what? Mm, no, possibly. I feel like that'd be a little, a bit of an extreme measure. Mm. Like if, I mean, I mean, I'm not a giant corporation or anything, but I don't feel like even I wouldn't do that. I don't know, man. I really don't know. Maybe it's just that they see a lot of those things. Maybe the wording you use sound a little bit too young. Like, you know, you just your your particular use of the English language when you're typing is just slightly less formal than they're used to seeing with adults. I did like two sentences and I would hardly say my style of speaking in a formal way. Like I like I wasn't trying to be casual by any stretch of the yeah. imagination. So I don't know. You never know. You probably just you probably just had someone that had a bad day or something. Yeah, they're yeah. like not another one of these guys. Yeah. Was there anything you wanted to say on the blackout mode before we left? Because I feel like that was the big selling point for this game. Um, didn't we, we talk about, about that on a previous podcast, I feel, for the beta? Oh, you know what? We did a little and bit. And I, I haven't, yeah, I haven't played just... it, actually, since the beta anyway. So I liked it so little I didn't want to go back to it. I felt I felt bad about it. Which that. is weird it, because I remember you were saying you actually quite enjoyed it. It was it was almost the, the PUBG itch and it was almost the Fortnite itch. It's right there in the middle right there but it wasn't really scratching either and there wasn't a third itch for it to scratch <laughs> it's just those two no fence to so, sit yeah, on i don't know yeah i wanted a i wanted a i was hoping it'd be more because i don't i don't enjoy Fortnite, and i was hoping it would be a Fortnite that that had better had better gunplay because i just don't think the gunplay in Fortnite is very good and um and I wish it was one that used like the idea of structure building a little bit. I think there is some kind of structure building thing in there, maybe. In blackout, I don't think so. I, okay, maybe not. I like what they were doing with the zombies. I thought that was cool. I don't totally. I think there's like special guns or something you can get there, or like special items that. Oh yeah, yeah, in like blackout. In. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah, I just didn't really, I didn't really scratch the itch. It, I guess it's just not a game for me. I wouldn't fault anyone for liking it. I think it's a solid game. Like, like all, all in all, like it's the gunplay is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, uh, it's manic. First of all, it's very, very like you're just running like crazy, and it, it feels like your brain is going a mile a minute and jumping around and stuff. And it, I, I don't know. It, it's interesting, but I wouldn't fault anyone for liking it. <sighs> all right, that's our that's our short episode, Jake. Short, he said. Oh, uh, it was that. It was fairly short. It was over half of half the length of most of ours. That's true. But th- to be fair, there's a lot to say about a lot of stuff. There is. I mean, if you I want, bad. I could always talk about Subnautica some more. Do, would you like to? I no, wouldn't no, mind no. that at all. I'm, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'll, new, tr- I'll try to not keep DLC. gushing about that game on this. 